Robin Williams, we all looked at him. He was always the manic, crazy guy in his youth. When he was young, oh my God, he was just rapid fire performance, just shooting that crap. He was just amazing. And I, I, I know I'm dating myself, but uh, I watched him all the way back to Mork. And if you guys don't even know what Mork and Mindy is, you need to find that shit on the internet because Jesus, that that's just it's mental. It's fun. Um, and I followed him through a stand-up career, and, uh, and then as he got older, his his acting changed, and he took on some more serious roles, and he was really amazing with it. To this day, I still adore Goodwill Hunting, mainly because of Robin Williams. He was an anchor point for that film. But the stuff we didn't see was Robin also had a lot of problems. Um, Early on in his career, he was seriously into cocaine in a bad way. To the point he finally had to go into, uh, into serious rehab. And not long ago... He was back in rehab again, this time for alcohol. And you wonder, lots of you folks, you look at his life and you wonder, what did this man have to be depressed about? I hate that question. Because it's the one that inevitably comes up, but from, mostly from the ignorant who go, we had all the money, it was in movies. What the fuck, man? Dumbass. That comes up quite a bit. Here's how it works. Um, it doesn't matter how well your life is doing or how poorly your life is doing. Depression is not a measure of that. It doesn't have anything to do with it. What it is, is a mis... It's a malfunction. So your brain, you, your thinking apparatus, is facilitated by a whole bunch of chemicals in there. All sorts of shit that's got many, many syllabic, syllabic names... I can barely speak basic English, okay? I'm not even going to try and... Serotonin, dopamine, neuro re all of these things are in there. And they're vital for you to think and be and do. They are the essence of what enables you to be you. Depression, for whatever reason, and it can be set off... Um, because of trauma. Trauma can do it. Um, or it can be inherited. It can be a genetic condition. But for whatever reason, some part of your brain starts making too much or too little of the wrong chemical. And all of a sudden, everything changes. Because being on... Being depressed, being seriously, a serious depression. What we talk, we talk about a clinical depression, something that just lasts and lasts for years and years. What that represents is you are technically under the influence of drugs. Serious. It's, it's, it's effectively what's going on in your head. Your, your, not you in the fact that you are impaired. Think about how you feel when you are seriously goddamn drunk. You've all had, you've all been that drunk. I know you have. You've been drunk enough to just the next morning go, oh God, oh Jesus Christ, oh God. Yeah, okay. Now, imagine while you were that drunk, you were challenged to hold a serious conversation 
and not deviate. You're going to have problems with that. Because you are on another, you know, you're fucked up. That's what it is. That's what it's like. Your sense of reality, your sense of of being is distorted. You aren't working like everybody else. Only, it's not. People can argue and say getting really, really drunk is fun. Sometimes it is. But the situation where you're being depressed is never fun. You, your threshold for containing things collapses. If you've never been depressed or had clinical depression, you know you've had bad times. You've had the breakups, you've had people die, you've had, you've had horrible shit in your life. But you also know about recovering. And you have a tremendous capacity to look at what's going on, all the bad stuff, and say, okay, I acknowledge this, but I have other things I need to do right now. Or you can say, I choose to focus on something else. I choose to focus on what's good in my life. I choose to focus on what's better. You have that control. When you're depressed, you don't. That ability to say, I want to focus on these other things, is not there. I want you to imagine for a second, every single fear and anxiety and regret and just pain and and self-loathing, all of those things. And you cannot keep them out of your head. You, You cannot focus on anything else. There's no way of doing it. That's what it's like every minute of every day. Sometimes with a lot of focus, you can, but it's exhausting. It literally takes energy out of you. Sometimes I feel like it's burning calories to do it. Now think of all that. That's what Robin Williams was living. A lot of people, when they have these issues, They turn to drugs, not understanding that what they're really doing is self-medicating. Cocaine, nicotine, if you're depressed, you're likely a smoker. Mainly because nicotine stimulates dopamine, which is one of those chemicals And it might not always work perfectly, but you do feel a little bit better and you feel like you got a little bit of that back. That that's that's what gets you into smoking. Eventually, however, that fades and you're just addicted. You're not getting that same feel anymore. Cocaine, same thing. Hell, cocaine, methamphetamine, crystal meth. Do you know why? Why it's it's so popular? Because it stimulates the pleasure centers in your brain. When you're depressed, that's kind of a way of fighting it back off. Or you feel like you have a little control again. You feel like a person again. You feel far beyond that and you start getting the other side effects. And you get hooked on it. Even alcohol for depressed people. And you'd say that was counterintuitive because alcohol is what they call a depressant. It's one that drives you down, that slow stuff. But you know, when you're depressed, if you get drunk enough, you can shut off, and shut down. You are functioning at such a low impaired level that you're not thinking about all that shit anymore. You're just kind of moving through it as best you can. So that's why I, I, I understand why Robin Williams 
People people look at that and they go, oh, he's just a he's just a showbiz jackass on drugs. He got all this money so he can do drugs. No. He got in a position where he could try drugs and realize this helps me. Don't know why. But this makes life better. So I'm going to keep doing this no matter what. And another thing, you look at Robin Williams, people look at his performances, his manic energy, his just brilliance, and they cannot, they're like, how can he be depressed? Something us people who are depressed learn, we fake it. Because we cannot function among you otherwise. Performers in general. I, you know, I, there have been many Monday nights when I've been doing the show live where I've had tons of other shit going on in my life that I could not deal with. But I still had to do my show. So I got on here and I pretended And I bet nine times out of ten, you kids never fucking knew. That's what we have to do. And primarily what I wanted to talk about in all this, and I know I'm I'm rambling on this, my, my intro monologue kind of shit. I do have a point here. Everyone is saying this didn't have to happen. For one thing, that's not something we can really judge. And I will tell you this. You are depressed. You are determined enough. You will take your own life. And all of your friends, everybody cared about you. It's going to feel like, God, I could have done something more. And you probably could it's you're dealing with something just awful here. So don't don't beat yourself up for one thing. If you're ever in that situation, don't just don't don't stomp on your own head. Don't don't do that. But what you can do change a little bit how how you perceive depression. You know someone who is depressed. I'm going to tell you some things that won't help them. And then I'm going to tell you something that will. I am going to tell you something magical. And I'm going to tell you the thing. All of your depressed friends are longing to hear someone say to them. Okay? Let's start off with Two philosophies that people have with dealing with depression that don't fucking work. They just don't. And it's not because of intent and it's not because of of any other reason besides the fact that you are dealing with someone who is having trouble with reason and logic. They don't work. Reason and logic just aren't you're dealing with someone who is chemically impaired. Okay. The same as if they're super stoned or if they were on acid or if they were drunk. Something's not right up there and it's blocking normal thought process. You can't reason your way through it. The first thing you should not do. You can sympathize with someone. But you cannot let that be the extent of your interaction with can't constantly say, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's so bad. That must be so horrible for you. It might sound like a good thing to do. You're trying to to empathize, trying to put yourself. But what you're trying to empathize with is crazy chemical bullshit. You've stopped talking to that person. You're talking to the crazy soup in their head. The crazy soup in their head ain't going to listen to you anyway. 
what that says to the person is I pity you. Even if that's not what you're saying, even if that's not your intent, that's what's coming across because we hear it so much, so much, so very much. And when you feel like others are pitying you, that feeds into all the rest of the shit you cannot keep out of your daily thought processes. Okay? It just adds to it. Which brings me to my other thing you shouldn't do. Don't try to push them to be better. This philosophy drives me crazy. It's this whole idea of, I just need a good kick in the ass, it'll be fine. Okay, when you're depressed, you're already getting kicked in the head. 24 7. Even when you're asleep. Because what your head does is it makes you think back to times that you might not have been happy, but the past comes back to you. You romanticize it. And what you're thinking of is all these great things that could be better. And you see people who've gone from your life and you're in the place you want to be, the way you want to be it. You have those dreams and you wake up and you realize it's not true. And depression laughs at you because it's fucked you again. So this is a constant thing. Constant thing. You cannot be like, you just got to get off your ass and feel better. Because what we hear is, this is your fault. You think you're pushing them to be better. What comes down to is, it's your fault. You're not getting better. You're not trying hard enough. You're not doing enough. When in fact, I got to say, a lot of people who are depressed, we do. We get help. We go to therapy. Try all the drugs. Change our eating habits. Exercise. And sometimes it still isn't enough. It's a fight and a struggle. Sometimes medications are really your only hope, but medication takes a long, long time to work out. And it's frustrating to be waiting that time for your meds to work. It can take months, sometimes years. All the while, you're still having your symptoms. And the last thing you want to feel like is the people around you think this is your fault, that it's your doing. And that's also, it's not just the kicking yourself, trying to motivate them. It's also, oh, you just have to think positive. This will get better. Just have to believe We can't. We cannot. We want to. We can't. It doesn't work. Again, you're talking to the soup, not to the person. You're talking to the drugs. You're talking to the influence. And and when you hear that, again, what they hear is it's your fault you're not happy. You're just not doing enough. Here's what every single person in your life who is depressed wants to hear you say. It's not your fault. That's not you talking. Okay? You must remind them That's not you. That's your imbalance. That's a symptom. That's a problem going on there. Remind them. When they start talking, when depressed people are are talking, it's, we have come to this sort of reason and logic that's a dead end. And it might seem like fatalistic talk for everybody else, but you have to realize we've been, it's like this nagging in you. And this seems like the only sense. In fact, why suicide happens 
is not that we're unhappy. We want it to stop. We just want it to stop. Think about it. This is, this is a, situ- a situation for a human being that gets so horrible. The only solution they can find is just make it stop. It's all we want. Just make it stop. Tell them it's not their fault. Remind them. That's not you talking. Yeah, tell them they got to keep doing what they're doing. Keep at it. Acknowledge it's going to suck and it's going to take time. You got to keep going because it will get better. When they are fatalistic about it, especially in the midst of therapy, especially in the midst of of trying to keep going. I have to hear that's not you talking. Because just hearing that a little bit helps you fight it. It really does. Getting that constant reminder that what's going on inside of you is out of your control. It's this weird thing. You can still you can sit there in the middle of it and, and isolate a little bit and go. You know, this crazy shit isn't part of me. It's using parts of me. But it's not me. And it helps you push back a little. It doesn't make things better. It doesn't. But it helps. You can push back just a tiny bit. Because when you're depressed, it's not that you can't cheer up. It's that you literally are incapable of being happy. You have, see, up here, this is where normal people have happy. This is where the rest, this is where normal people have sad. Depressed people can't get here because there's a wall right about here. A little glass ceiling you smack right into. We want to get up there because it looks fun up there, but we can't. The best emotional state we can get untreated without any help is just tolerable. That's the best we can do. And yes, encourage people to seek help. Encourage people to do what they can. But just remind them that's not you. That'll help. It's not their fault and it's not them talking. Give them a little bit of distance from that fucked up shit going on in there. And I tell you that that's what they all, that's what every depressed person is longing to hear someone say. Because every day we have everything in our head. We even feel like we're a burden on you. We do. We hate it. Because we know it's draining to deal with us. We know we are frustrating you. Because we're not reacting how people do when you, you know, you're supposed to cheer them up and help them. We don't react to that. And yeah, it seems like we want to feel this way. And we, hate, we don't want to do it to you. That's why we isolate ourselves a lot. Because it just feels pointless. And it feels like we're hurting you too. But if you can put aside your frustration and be willing to lose a little energy, remind them it's not their fault. It's not them talking. And you'll even find pretty soon, the more you say that, you'll be able to deal with it as as a separate part of them as well. And it will make other it will make the depressed stuff it will make dealing with depressed people less frustrating for you because you'll be reminded of exactly what you're dealing with too
When someone's depressed, they already feel like everything is their fault already. Everything. Even shit that happened decades ago. Everything is their fault. It's this constant state of guilt, anxiety, worry, sadness, pain. Physical pain. There's that weight on your chest. It's been there so long, it's, it's part of your rib cage, honestly. And you've got to separate the person from the disease. That's the only way you and them are going to survive it. And right now, if you're watching this and you are suffering from depression, and you'll know you are because all the shit I've been describing, you have all just went, holy shit, that's me. I've done that too. It's not your fault. That's not you talking. You are not these thoughts pushing into your head. That's just chemicals fucked up and it's not real. It's not real. And if you get help, it's going to take a long time. And it's going to be a fight and it's going to suck. But it will get better.